Pat and I found a uh, video that most people have not seen of of a guy, a pastor in Virginia that is one of the biggest truth tellers I've ever seen. One of the bravest guys I've ever seen. I mean, and we, we were trying to put it in the machine and it's like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. It's pretty long, yeah. yeah Four or we, five at least. We tried to put it in the machine and we were just trying to put sound bites in it and we couldn't stop it because we were like, no you, no, you can't stop it there. I mean, I hate to start playing it because it's so impossible to stop because you're like, oh my God, somebody's actually That's saying That's another it. great point. It's another great point. I can't believe this mm-hmm. guy is saying it. Here's, here's just a little bit of it. My name is Bishop E.W. Jackson, chairman of Ministers Taking a Stand with a message to Christians in the black community. It is time to end the slavish devotion to the Democrat Party. They have insulted us, used us, and manipulated us. Yep. They have saturated the black community with ridiculous lies. Unless we support the Democrat Party, we will be returned to slavery. We will be robbed of voting rights. The Martin Luther King holiday will be repealed. They think we are stupid and that these lies will hold us captive while they violate everything we believe as Christians. The Democrat Party has created an unholy alliance between certain so-called civil rights leaders and Planned Parenthood, which has killed unborn black babies by the tens of millions. Planned Parenthood has been far more Mm. lethal to black lives than the KKK ever was. And the Democrat Party and their black civil rights allies. See, it's hard to stop 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 because you're just like, it just keeps going and going and going. And he just takes them all apart. Bishop E.W. Jackson um, is with us now on the phone from Virginia. Uh, His website is standamerica.us. Bishop, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Glenn. And first of all, let me just say thank you for having me on. And let me say that my wife and I and and most of our friends are very big fans of yours. And we want to express our gratitude for all that you have done to help wake this country up. God bless you for it. And also, I want to bring you greetings from a mutual friend of ours, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. Oh, yeah. I I told him I was going to be on. So he told me, well, don't mess up. (laughs) He's a good man. (laughs) Have we met before? No, we have not. I wanted to come um, to your uh, minister's convention in D.C., and yes. my schedule didn't permit it, so we have not had a chance to meet, no. Well, y- you are, you, you must be despised by a great many, some in the underworld. Um, I've got a few detractors, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet you, can't you, do. Say, you can't say the things you say and not just be vilified. Um, I mean, you because with what is it right now? Ninety four percent of the African American populace uh, being in favor of voting for this guy again. Uh, they got to just tear you apart every time you and say this. And it's not about kind of it's stuff. not even about Barack Obama. It is it is about the progressive policies yeah. that have destroyed. I mean, I can't believe Planned Parenthood, Bishop. How is Planned Parenthood? not known in the African American community for exactly what it what it is and what it was a a death sentence to the black community that's what it was, it was designed to be yeah founded yeah, for and, that and Glenn that's why I intentionally did not mention Barack Obama explicitly in that tape because I was trying to help people to see ideas and get away from the personality and just look at what the principles are that they're following and how much they're in discordance with what people in the church community at least claim to believe. And, and frankly, I mean, yeah, I just got finished reading an email just before coming on the program, one of those nasty emails that you get, uh, calling me an Uncle Tom, saying I'm an anti-gay hero, a hero and, uh, you know, this and that. But, you know, I'm getting a tremendously positive response from many in the black community, and I think this may be the beginning of a fissure uh, and the end of that slavish devotion, as I referred to it, to the Democrat Party. I'll tell you, I, I just read Booker T. Washington's uh, book, Up From Slavery, um, just recently, in the last year. And between him and Frederick Douglass, uh, every every American, but especially every black American, should read Booker T. Washington and Frederick Douglass. These guys were amazing. And they talked about this, as you called it, slavish devotion to a party or to the government. Um, and and said exactly um, what would happen, uh, and it is it has all happened, and that's why I think so many um, real black heroes have been um, uh, erased from history. 
And, and you know, Glenn, uh, that's one of the reasons why I will not be silent, because I believe in humanity. I believe in people. I believe in members of the black community, that they're full of potential and beauty and God-given gifts. And what I see is a party and a progressive movement that is robbing them of their potential and robbing them of their dreams and their vision. And I want to awaken in them the sense, no, there's more for you than that. God has something better for you than that. Don't accept this dependence and this sort of this sycophancy that says, we'll give you a few crumbs. All you got to do is do our bidding and ignore those little principles you say you believe in, because after all, if you don't, well, those boogeymen are out there and they're going to get you. That's, that's what I want to ask you about, because um, African-Americans, um, if it wasn't for the African-American and the Hispanic in California, Prop 8 would would have. I mean, would have, would have, would, would, you know, would have gay marriage. You'd have gay marriage in uh, in uh, California, um, and because people actually came out and said, "No, I don't believe in that," and they were the minorities, it failed. Now, tell me how how do you get people to um, who are religious, who are decent people? just completely to divorce themselves of those principles in the voting booth. Because I, it's like Harry Reid. I'm a Mormon. He's a Mormon. I don't understand, and I'm sure he doesn't understand me, but I don't understand how he can be for the things that he um, is and do some of the things that he does and, and still say that he is um, you know, in good standing with the Scriptures because it, it doesn't work. Well, you, you know, uh, Glenn, there's a saying that I've heard among ministers. Some are called and some were sent and some just got up and went. Uh, and I think some of the people who claim to be Mormon or claim to be this or claim to be that, that's all they're doing. They're just claiming it's, it's a head thing. It's something they inherited, it, but they don't believe it or feel it in their hearts. But with the black community particularly, there are two things I think that have led to this. One is Fear. They've been manipulated by fear, you know, the fear that they're going to get you. They're out there. They're, they're out there to get. I mean, Glenn, you, you know, I, I have watched your program. I've had people say to me, well, somebody, they told me that Glenn Beck is a racist. And then I started watching his program. I said, I want to see this guy. I want to see. Is he? And then they start saying, well, you know, I didn't hear him say anything racist. And then they watch a little bit more, and they say, well, wait a minute, where, where's that coming from? It's a lie intended to manipulate people. And then the second thing is bad leadership. When you've got the likes of Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, some of these civil rights leaders who are interested in promoting racial division and hostility and a sense of victimization in order to further their own careers, then you get people listening to the wrong kind of leadership. And to me, bad leadership produces bad results. Do you, do you feel, uh, first of all, I'm a, uh, uh, I have firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. I don't believe that um, God is neutral in the affairs of man or the freedom of man. And if America falls, um, the whole world falls. I mean, there's nobody to stand for freedom. I agree. Uh, and it will be um, for genera- It will be generational darkness. Um, and I have had an overwhelming uh, sense that His will will be done, and that there are enough people that are standing up, that are good, that are they're actually, I shouldn't say standing up, are humbling themselves to not have God on um, their side, which he doesn't do, but to be, to, for us to move, to be on his side. And I think there's, I think we're on the threshold of miracles and profound change. Do you feel that way? 